This week in drone news, we have four stories for you. The new Autel Evo Max, PSI is changing the cut to the testing centers, and that's not good news. The FCC announces an NPRM for UAS, and then lastly, Ford is applying for an interesting patent. Let's get to it. Your first story this week is Autel's new Evo Max. Uh, this was a bit of a surprise. It was uh, kind of announced a couple of days ago as a, as a teaser, and then today we have more information. But uh, the Evo is, as the name implies, the, the, the large version of the Evo 2. Uh, the Max comes with a 640 thermal sensor, a 48 megapixel zoom sensor as well that's capable of doing a 10x optical zoom, which is really cool, and then also 8K video, which is also very impressive, uh, a 4K wide camera, and then a laser rangefinder. Uh, Autel's new enterprise drone comes with all direction obstacle avoidance. They call it 720 uh, degrees of obstacle avoidance and then an optical uh, millimeter wave radar. Uh, the drone has a maximum operating altitude of 23,000 feet, flight time of 42 minutes or 38 minutes hovering, and then an IP43 rating, which means in English, light rain. Uh, the Evo Max has also some other really cool features, uh, such as being able to act as a repeater for other drones and then possibly even uh, doing swarm style uh, missions with a single pilot. Now we're hopeful that we can get our hands on one of them and test it out soon, but it's a really cool looking drone and it's cool to hear that Autel uh, is uh, coming up with new models uh, after being quiet for a little while. Uh, we don't have any idea on price just yet or availability, but we'll be sure to let you know uh, when we hear more. Your second story this week is PSI is changing the cut for the testing centers. Uh, as many of you know, PSI is the testing provider for all FAA tests uh, and the only testing provider um, as per the FAA. And then PSI contracts with a lot of local testing centers to provide the exam. And then those ten testing centers get a cut of the revenue in return. Now, according to an AOPA letter to PSI, uh, they say that there's a significant majority of the 207,000 exams that are completed every year that were done at a contracted testing center, not a PSI-owned testing center. Uh, PSI is now changing the amount of revenue that goes to these centers from $65 per exam down to only $22 per exam. Now, keep in mind, this is out of $175 that they are charging for the exam. Now, this is a reduction of nearly 66%. Uh, there's been a lot of chatter about this because some testing centers are saying they're not going to be doing this anymore because it's not worth it. And I really can't blame them. Now, AOPA is worried that this reduction in revenue will have a direct impact on not only the amount of testing centers nationwide, but also on uh, the fact that this is going to create longer wait times and also longer drives in order to get to a testing center. And uh, if this is something that uh, you're also worried about, please make sure that you leave a comment down uh, below the video so we uh, know what you're thinking. Your third story this week is the FCC has started to do the rulemaking process for enabling UAS to use 5G. Uh, the NPRM is not short, it's 94 pages long, and it includes a number of potential things to comment on, uh, including the usage of very specific bands, the fees, the registration, or even the licensing that's going to be required uh, to do all of this. Now, I want to be clear when I talk about fees, I'm not talking about you um, getting a fee in order to use this service. Uh, I'm talking about the, the, the people that are going to be using those bands having to apply and getting a fee. So it's, uh, it's a little bit different here. Now, the NPRM discusses both uh, network connected and network supported UAS that are going to be using this band. And uh, this is also discussing uh, potential, uh, potentially adding geographic licensing and then how they would affect satellite based networks. Uh, the NPRM is a lot to digest, as you can imagine. We're still going through it as we speak because it just uh, popped up yesterday uh, as we're recording this. So we'll let you know when we have more. Uh, this is an interesting topic, especially coming in light uh, after the, the bit of a fiasco that the, the 5G thing, uh, the, the 5G integration was uh, with the FA and airlines. I, I want to be positive, but we'll see what happens uh, with this. Your final story this week is a Ford patent that uh, details a method of safely flying a drone over moving vehicles. Now, the patent involves communication between drones, vehicles, uh, and then a bunch of other ground objects. Uh, the patent also describes how emergencies would be mitigated uh, through the system and then by using the communication between all the devices. Now, this is an interesting patent, definitely not the first for uh, Ford, but it will be likely a while before we see anything like this uh, going live. That's it. That's all I have for you. Like, subscribe, and then we'll see you next week.
Is that good or do you just want that's it, folks?